Eight days in a row of gains for the S&P 500, closing in on its all-time high. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, though, finishing down 83 points on the day, closing at 26,341. The S&P 500 up three points, ending at 2895, and the Nasdaq up 15, ending the trading session at 7,953. Market analysis now from Jim Lowell. He's the Chief Investment Officer at Advisor Investments and the editor of FidelityInvestor.com. He's in the newsroom. Hi, Jim. Hey, Brian. So relatively flat, really, today. Anything interesting going on to move the numbers? No, as a math market, one of the things that not just our markets, but the global markets know is that earnings reporting season gets underway, uh, well, towards the tail end of this week, but really begins to gather steam in the next several weeks. And that will be mission critical data for this market, which tends to be moved by earnings. Before then, we don't get a lot of economic reports. The event driven news has basically settled down. <clears throat> Even the issue of Brexit, which uh, we will revisit again this Friday on the April 12th voting deadline, seems to have taken a backseat to uh, investors playing a wait and see game. Oil prices up today, uh, not good for consumers at the pump, but an indication of uh, global stimulus, or is there something else going on? More like global concern with regard to what's happening inside of Libya in particular, putting a premium on, uh, premium on the price of oil. Uh, over the last several days. Uh, that said, uh, the overall trajectory, overall trajectory with oil prices uh, is now sitting at, I think, a five-month high. That suggests that uh, both OPEC cuts and uh, slow growth, not no growth, continue to lift the price, at least on a temporary basis. All right, here in the U.S., we've got midweek mid reporting of the FOMC minutes. What do you expect to hear from that? I think what we will see is that the Fed uh, rightly became a little bit more cautious as we entered this year with so many event-driven risks circulating around it. Its job is to effectively safeguard our economy. Uh, so I don't suspect we'll see any surprises inside of those notes. It's always an interesting way to get a glimpse in terms of how the Fed members are talking amongst themselves. There may be, a, speaking of Fed members, there may be a fight brewing on Capitol Hill with Herman Cain. He's the former Godfather Pizza CEO, ran for the Republican nomination for president a few years ago. He and Stephen Moore, a former Wall Street Journal uh, editorial writer, they're who President Trump wants, on the, uh, wants to put on the Fed. Uh, what do you think of this? Well, uh, Kane was uh, the former uh, head of the Kansas City Fed. He's got some business credentials. Moore does as well. That said, they're both uh, highly partisan picks. And I think what the president doesn't get is that he doesn't have to stack the deck of the Fed in terms of pro-business uh, friendly Fed. The Fed's job is to safeguard the economy, which is de facto pro-business. So I think he may be making a, a political misstep for really a zero-sum game. All right. What do we got coming up tomorrow? Tomorrow we have the job openings report, and we will then look towards a week where we really are sort of uh, focused on scant reports. Event-driven news may have the upper end. And then earnings starting at the end of the week. Indeed. All right, Jim Lowell, Advisor Investments, Newton, Massachusetts. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Brian.